Hi, it's time to meet a Norwegian celebrity. Uh, this online guest is Ivar Bjarnsson and he's the guitarist and songwriter of legendary band Enslaved. And Enslaved's got a new album out on Nuclear Blast, October 2nd. And my first question is really to get a reaction out of Ivar. Because they've been around since the early 90s. They've released albums, toured albums, toured albums, toured and so on. And Utgard is their 15th album. I say it again. Their 15th album. Your thoughts on that, Ivar? It is very bizarre. Um, um, it, I, I caught myself reading on uh, online on how, like which bands has released the most sort of in the metal genre. Obviously, you go and check Motorhead and ACDC and all that, and to just just the I, just the notion of like that's within that doesn't sound that crazy. That sort of gave me a point that it it is pretty crazy, which is uh, which is fun, but and I think. With Utgard, it's a particular, uh, particularly cool to to release it as it really makes the whole trip uh, get, make sense. It's sort of I can understand uh, if if you come from the outside and then you listen to you pick two albums which they have in the record store, Monumention from two thousand one, and then you go the next one you listen to is Axioma, and then you check out Frost from ninety four. You might like w w what's wrong with these guys, but sort of if you followed it, and now have this fifteenth. For me, Utgard is really the album that ties it all together. It's for me, it's the album that says, "Look, we're not crazy. We just have very long plans." <laughs> and it takes a long it's, time to fulfill those plans, sort of. Exactly, exactly, and also the, just. I, I hear it, and I, uh, I think other people can hear it, that it's really a band that's enjoying playing together. We are trying some new things. We're surprising ourselves with short, you know, going more proggy with shorter songs is a typical contradictory uh, thing that we know. We don't, we don't discover it before starting talking to people who's heard the album. And then we get all these people saying stuff like that. Like, it's more proggy, but shorter songs. What's up with that? And then we go like, eh. We didn't. We, we simply don't think it's. I'm looking at you sitting in front of a, a beautiful record collection, and and that is a very, that, that's the symbol. I think if you had to take like a contemporary item that represents what enslaved is, it would be a wall full of vinyls from different genres, uh, and that becomes enslaved. You know. So one moment it's uh, um, it's Miles Davis at his best slash worst whatever people think of his psychedelic period next moment it's Bathory Hammerheart full on Viking metal um, and then there'll be some 70s electronica some 90s electronica whatever and, and it's all just that's the project of trying to take all this insane amount of loose ends and make it into some kind of tapestry that that makes a picture so it takes a long time but uh, I really feel now I'm happy that we, we started. There has been times when I thought, like, wh where are we? Are we, how near land are we? How far from shore are we? Are we on the surface or are we upside down in the ocean? What, what's going on here? I understand that Utgard is like a, a dreamlike uh, landscape or state of mind where the gods have no power. How did you come up with that theme for the album? Yeah, luckily some uh, some people did that job before us, uh, some thousand years ago, uh, <laughs> creating like Norse mythology, uh, and, and I guess there's variations and, and local uh, traditions here and there. But these uh, Icelandic scholars, mostly monks, uh, who were the first ones to to write write these books, um, wrote them down, and Utgard. Uh, would be sort of the stronghold of the giants. The giants are very prominent in Norse mythology. You have sort of, from a Christian point of view, because they, they, they do have this, like Christianity, Islam, Judaism, they all have the, the beginnings which are quite similar to what uh, we find in Norse mythology. They're all mystical individual religions. And then, you know, <clears throat> somebody just adds, you know, it's like they're adding an essence of, oppression you know oppression essence just add 
a liter of water and oppression essence, and you you have these big political religions. Um, but in in Norse mythology, uh, they would be portrayed gods good, giants bad, sort of, you know. But it's it's a lot more complex than that. It's much more like the human mind in a sense, a good image of society and the individual in a sense that they're mostly good. Uh, a god like Odin, you know, it's uh, it's ridiculous because he's basically an asshole. He has a lot of wisdom and, and all that, but you can see it in the mythology that he has a lot of weaknesses. Um, but he his strength is sort of recognizing his own weaknesses and so on. So it's got the more di- di- interesting human dynamic to it. And the giants, they represent these unpredictable elements. They're like the the crazy guy at the back of the bar, so the nomad can really make out. And it, you can't call them evil just because they're, because they're chaotic. They're just unpredictable. And that's also where a lot of the humor and, and inspiration for, for art comes from. Um, but it's we've been for a lot of albums working with runes and known myths and so on. So this time it really felt fresh and inspiring to work on the Utgard myths. Uh, speaking of, you know, relationships between humans and stuff, uh, you and your companion Grutle, you have been in the same band for a very long time. How would you describe your friendship? Brothers. Uh, I would say brothers that are um, close, very close. Um, but He's missed the nature uh, in, in terms of being in nature the entire time. Uh, I do like to look at nature. I'm very inspired by it. But uh, he thinks everything before 1968 is, is uh, crap. I think a lot of stuff that happened after 2016 is great. You know? <laughs> and so we, we sort of we complement each other quite well. Does he have uh, qualities that you're envious of? Like, oh, I would like to be a little bit more like that. Absolutely. He's, uh, I, I refer to him a lot as uh, sort of the, the engine in a very long, strange train. He's got the stamina and, and sort of a d- determination, uh, hard-headedness that is just out of this world. Uh, it's, it, I remember our old French record label boss would refer to him as Grutle de Bourgloser. Uh, and that's, that's quite accurate. If I asked him the same thing, what do you think he would say about you? What quality of yours uh, would he like to have? Maybe the sort of uh, the ability to come up with ideas out of pretty much thin air uh, a lot of the time. That there's always some wacky new project or uh, well, let's do this or that. And, and then we're really surprised when people go like, but why would we do that? It's just crazy. Right? Okay. Yes, that's why we're doing it. So I think, I think he would he, he would recognize that as a as a positive trait in a collaboration. Uh, getting back to the album now, you let uh, Jens Bogren do the mixing this time, but you recorded uh, the album itself by yourselves, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now, even, oh, sorry. Uh, how, how come you didn't want you know to make that uh, do that last part yourselves as well? Do the mixing instead of giving it away to Jens. Mostly because Jens re- finally caved in and, and grew a really cool beard. Um, no, seriously, <laughs> it's because, w- again, maybe it's a little bit of the relationship that I just described between me and Gutle, where I would be uh, enslaved and Jens would represent some, some of Gutle's qualities. You want to make the album, then there's some threads hanging outside and things. And he has a very elegant way of sort of pulling them back in without necessarily straightening them out too much. He just fights the right, right angle so they don't poke out that much. Um, and, and he has, he, it's just, it's still a metal band. So we like that, that power that is, that is added from a, a, a mixer and, and producer on his level. Um, thinking about the future here, how do you see the enslaved year in 2021? Um, hopefully it will be charging out the gates and playing live shows together with every other other band on the planet. We'll be out there trying to sort of catch up uh, doing shows. I mean, I've chosen to be an optimist. I'm thinking that it will be like it was plus more because it's just really put so much focus on how much people miss it. So I think people who sort of uh, slept 
away from the live scene uh, before COVID might be remembered through the whole thing that this is something and maybe we are you know I think also we're going to keep this digital part you know if I could be able to see the entire Wacken festival uh, on like super 4k uh, production on a streaming thing I think I, then I would understand what these people do when they take time off from work to watch the Olympics and sit in their underwear and just piss in the chair drinking beer all day I would do that with these Hellfest luck and that kind of thing uh, because it's too rough to go there. Uh, so this, I think, I think it's just going to grow, and uh, hopefully we will be in the middle of it and, and trying to fight for our piece of the attention. Mm. Um, I think uh, Utgard is a killer, total killer album. Totally love Thank it, you. and it's out on Nuclear Blast on October second. And it was great talking to you, Ivar, and I wish you the best of luck with the album and Enslaved and 2021 and everything. Likewise, Matthias. Thank you so much for a very great interview. Thanks. See you, See you. outside of the quarantines. <laughs>